Uh, we're out here today and going to talk to you about grazing and cattle management in the context of upland bird management, specifically quail. We utilize cattle in certain instances to get the disturbance that we want. You've heard us talk about disturbance being important for quail, especially for the chicks. They got to have mobility. And from Missouri East, we get a lot of rainfall. Vegetation gets a little thick. Uh, one nice thing with grazing that we found is it's a uniform application. When we utilize grazing, we, we don't necessarily hem them into uh, certain paddocks. It can be done, and it can be done to make it quail friendly. Um, but we utilize the whole pasture. So although we may only burn a third of a, a pasture, a third of a unit, which I've already talked to you about that disturbance being important for the small quail chicks, they'll graze the entire unit. So we can get open areas, travel lanes, they'll use cattle trails, all kinds of different maneuverability for these small chicks throughout the entire unit. <clears throat> Grazing is one of the, the best tools that we have found to manage every inch of a quail property, every inch of a, a unit, a pasture, whatever dimensions we're talking about. And the benefit is we can do this on working landscapes, people working ranches, working farms. A lot of people for years have thought, you know, quail and cattle don't coexist. Well, some of the, in good rainfall years, the best quail in the country are down in Texas where there's a lot of cattle on the landscape as well. Um, they really can go hand in hand, and we're using the cattle as a tool, same as fire, same as a disc, whatever, to remove that excess of vegetation, create some bare ground, allow some forbs to come up, and as that moves across the landscape with fire, or if you were using rotational grazing, it'll shift that mosaic, that diversity of plants. Um, and so it can provide this opportunity, this diversity, for the quail to select where they want to live, where they want to raise their brood, instead of us forcing them into these pigeonholed little um, units. Any cattle will work for these operations. Um, different cattle feed different ways though. So depending on our goals and depending on our desires and how much vegetation we want removed, um, cow calves will graze differently than stalker cattle. Um, so it's important to take all that into consideration. And our grazing, setting the stocking rates, our grazing is, is pretty moderate. Um, obviously we're not <clears throat> necessarily trying to, if we're on a, a quail landscape where we're trying to maximize quail, we're not trying to necessarily 100% maximize profits. We're using the cattle as a tool. So the cattle are getting good weight gains. Uh, but we're getting the vegetation removed. On that note, on the weight gains, it's important to know, note that lots of times in Missouri and the Midwest, uh, cattle are restricted to fescue, cool season grasses. And in the midsummer, that growth really drops off, especially in dry years. And on these native grasses, whether it's plantings or native prairie, that's when these plants are thriving. So grazing during the midsummer months We've had uh, daily gains up around 1.7 to 2.1 pounds a day, whereas most animals on fescue in mid-July in Missouri are barely maintaining. They're not gaining. If they are, um, it's because they're supplementally feeding. So it's certainly for the producer a cost-effective way to increase gains, have some, during that fescue summer slump, have some place to put their cattle, but also to benefit quail habitat and reduce some of that excessive vegetation and create some more usable space. <laughs>